In this chemistry course, we have so far mainly spoken about inorganic chemistry and different aspects of physical chemistry. Modern chemistry, however, is a lot more about organic chemistry and biochemistry, often in close relationship with analytical chemistry. Organic chemistry is the topic of this video and many following. What is organic chemistry? Well, simply put, organic chemistry is the chemistry of compounds with carbon in them. And we'll start with alkanes, which are the very simplest ones, the molecules that only contain carbon and hydrogen atoms, also called hydrocarbons. Now, this is an image of the very simplest of all the alkanes in the entire universe. It's called methane. Hopefully you recognize this Lewis structure from earlier videos. In this molecule, the carbon atom with its four valence electrons is in the center of the molecule. The four valence electrons are drawn in blue. One, two, three, four. Thanks to these four valence electrons, the carbon atom may bind to four hydrogen atoms like this. Each hydrogen atom has one valence electron, and in this way, the carbon atom gets noble gas structure and is, so to speak, satisfied. Also, each hydrogen atom is now satisfied, because they now have two valence electrons each, and thus also has noble gas structure. In this way, a carbon atom may bind to not only hydrogen atoms, but also to other carbon atoms and a lot of other different atoms as well. This makes carbon a very versatile atom, which may be used in a lot of different structures and molecules. And that is why every living organism is made of carbon-containing compounds. This is also why the chemistry of carbon-containing compounds is called organic chemistry. Originally, when chemists started to discover the organic compounds, it was called organic because they thought that they required some kind of vital spark in order to form. Today, biochemistry is more considered to be the chemistry of life, but life itself is still much, much more complex than being able to carry out the chemical reactions that take place in a living organism. Anyway, this is how we start looking at the organic chemistry, with the simplest organic molecule of them all, the methane molecule. Let's have a look at the two simplest alkanes, methane and ethane. This is a model of a methane molecule where the central carbon atom is black and the four white hydrogen atoms are attached to the carbon atom with covalent bonds. The structural formula, which we draw here, is, so to speak, a translation of the model onto paper. Each covalent bond is shown by a line, like this, between the carbon and the hydrogen atoms. If we count all the atoms in the molecule, we get the molecular formula CH4. As I said, two carbon atoms may also bind to each other with a covalent bond. This is what happens in an ethane molecule, of which you can see a model here. Can you see that there's a covalent bond here between the two carbon atoms, and three hydrogen atoms bound to each carbon atom? Because of this, we can write the structure of ethane like this. Now, we can also count all the carbon and hydrogen atoms and arrive at the molecular formula C2H6. Now, I want you to learn that methane and ethane, they are the two simplest hydrocarbons with one and two carbon atoms respectively. To study the somewhat larger hydrocarbons, I think it would be appropriate to organize them in a table, like this. In this table, I put name, model, structural formula, simplified structure, and molecular formula in the table head. You copy this table too, but you can skip model because there I will show models which you don't have to draw too. Anyway, methane and ethane, as I said, they contain one and two carbon atoms respectively. If we have three carbon atoms linked together, like in this molecule, it's called a propane molecule. Since we have three carbon atoms bound to each other with covalence bond here in the model, we can write its structural formula like this. And you draw this too. Sometimes you don't have access to a molecular drawing app, or sometimes you just want to write the structure really quickly in your paper. Then you can use a simplified structure like this. CH3, CH2, CH3. In just a little while, we'll simplify the structures even more. Anyway, if we add up all the atoms in the molecule, we get the molecular formula C3H8. If we link four carbon atoms together like this, we get a molecule called butane, or actually rather N-butane. 
N here stands for normal. And why we talk about normal butane or N-butane, I'll explain that in a later video. For now, just bear with me and trust me that this molecule is called N-butane. We can write its structure like this. And if we simplify it like we did before, we can write N-butane structure like this. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. The molecular formula is, as usual, all the different atoms added together for butane C4H10. Now, the first four alkanes that we have discussed, they still have sort of like their historical names. For larger alkanes, chemists realized that we need to organize the names of the molecules a little bit more. That is why when we reach five carbon atoms, this molecule is called n-pentane. Why is this more logical, you think? It is because penta in Greek means five. So, in order to name the different alkanes, it is necessary for you to learn how to count in Greek, too. But, to be honest, it's not that difficult. Perhaps you recognize penta from pentagram, the star with five corners, or pentagon, the building with five sides that is also the US Department of Defense. That's where penta comes from. So, anyway, from this model, we move on to the structure with five carbon atoms bound together like this, and then hydrogen atoms bound to every carbon atom. This time, I simplify the structure even more by removing the dashes between the atoms like this. All in all, the molecular formula for pentane is C5H12. Righty-o, so we have methane, ethane, propane, butane and pentane so far. When the hydrocarbons grow even larger, we need to simplify even more. A new table, and this time we write name, model, skeleton formula and molecular formula in the table head like this. In Greek, hexa means six. So here comes n-hexane with six carbon atoms in the model like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. This time, let's draw a skeletal formula for hexane. It looks like this. In a skeletal formula, each covalent bond is drawn with a line like this. It means that in each corner and in each end of the molecule, there are carbon atoms. And everywhere where there's room, it's understood that there are hydrogen atoms. This means that in a hexane molecule, there are six carbon atoms and 14 hydrogen atoms, so the molecular formula becomes C6H14. After hexa comes hepta in Greek, so in an n-heptane molecule, there are seven carbon atoms like this and 16 hydrogen atoms as well. Do count them if you do not trust me. We write the skeletal formula like this, showing that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 carbon atoms linked together with covalent bonds. With 2 hydrogen atoms on each of these carbons and 3 on these two, we have a total of 16 hydrogen atoms. The molecular formula for heptane is thus C7H16. N-octane looks like this. It consists of eight carbon atoms like this, and just like the previous hydrocarbons, there are hydrogen atoms on every carbon atom like this. We write the skeletal formula like this, showing that there are eight carbon atoms here. Since there are also two hydrogen atoms on each of these carbon atoms, and three hydrogens on each of these, there's a total of 18 hydrogen atoms, and the molecular formula for octane is C8H18. Oh, and by the way, yes, this octane is the same octane that is used as reference in octane rating of engine or aviation fuel. That's petrol if you're British, or gasoline if you're American. Nine in Greek is nona. So the next hydrocarbon in our table is n nonane with nine carbon atoms like this. We write the skeletal formula like this, and its molecular formula is C9H20. The last hydrocarbon in this table is N-decane, which looks like this. You may recognize the Greek word for 10 here, the same as in, for example, a decade, which is 10 years. The skeletal formula for decane looks like this, and its molecular formula is C10H22. Now, what I want you to learn is essentially this, by heart. The names of the 10 first hydrocarbons. 
I call this the hydrocarbon series, and you should learn them like this, sort of like a nursery rhyme for budding chemists. Methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. But before you start practicing, I want to show you another type of alkane, the cycloalkanes. As the name implies, they are cyclic, which means that the carbon atoms form a ring-like structure. The smallest of all cycloalkanes is cyclopropane, which looks like this. It is a kind of propane molecule because it only consists of three carbon atoms like this. And because it's cyclic, it's called cyclopropane. We can write its structure like this, and the molecular formula becomes C3H6. The next cycloalkane is cyclobutane, which looks like this. Since it consists of four carbon atoms, it is a kind of a butane molecule. And since the molecule is circular, it is called cyclobutane. This is its structural formula, and its molecular formula is C4H8. The next one is, I'm sure you guessed it, cyclopentane. Once again, it is called pentane because it is made of five carbon atoms and cyclopentane because it's cyclic. This time, I choose to write its skeletal formula like this. As before, there's a carbon atom in each corner and hydrogen atoms everywhere where there's room. This means that there are two hydrogen atoms on each carbon atom and the molecular formula becomes C5H10. The final cycloalkane in this table is, of course, cyclohexane. Six carbon atoms linked together with covalent bonds in a circular structure gives us this structural formula and a molecular formula which reads C6H12. The final alkane I want to discuss in this video is a rather funny one. As you can see, in this alkane, there are eight carbon atoms linked together like some sort of cube. And yes, this molecule is actually called cubane. 